Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. We are winding down elk season, and I think all of us have really already switched in our mind to whitetail mode. And that's where we're going. We're, we're going through October. We're fixing to head out and, and start whitetail. And we're in Kansas this year. We've got some really phenomenal bucks showing up. But just like last year, remember last year when we had five or six, mm -hmm. they disappeared. This year we've got Tank is back. We've got uh, uh, that buck we called Wide Thing Senior. Mm -hmm. We've got Chewy, he's back. And that heavy, crabby buck. Crabby. A cool and and then we've also got a buck that we're calling Sir Pass a lot. Tell us, why do you think we should take him this year? Yeah, so there's a three-year-old eight point that came by my stand almost every sit. And I just started calling him Pass a lot. And now he's, I believe he's four this year. And his frame's a little wider, he's a little taller, but he's just not anything special. Um, and it's like you could call it a call buck, but you're not really calling them for the genetics. You know, the genetics in the wild population are so diverse. It's more if we can remove that buck, we're opening up the territory for a buck that can move in and hopefully have, you know, something that's a little more interesting for us. And then you never know what's going to happen during the rut. Last year we had three or four bucks move in, so that's mm -hmm. going to be an exciting, exciting time just to check trail cams. It's just so much fun for us because Whitetail Properties, it's a year-round puzzle. It is. It's not just, oh, let's go out and hunt, and you sit in whatever stand the wind calls for. It's You're setting the stands. We're using you know, some killer food plots this year, and it's just the adventure is all year long. It's going to be exciting. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> We are back in Kansas. This is uh, kind of the end of our little work run mm -hmm. between Missouri and Kansas. And uh, what we're planning to do today, we're moving a couple of stands, but the main thing to do here is get our killer food plot in. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we picked a location in the center of the property, kind of the core area, right where we want to concentrate those deer in the daylight. Now, in order to get the plot to grow, this is virgin ground right here. So we're gonna go in with this little weed whacker. Again, this is, we don't have any equipment. We're doing this by hand, so it's gonna be a lot of work. We're gonna weed whack out all the grass and brush. We're gonna lightly till it, just enough to break up the soil so those small seeds can get some contact. Then what's still green on the surface, we'll hit with Roundup. We'll uh, let that dry, broadcast the seed out, and then we got the cultipacker. We'll drag behind the truck and press that seed into the soil and with a couple good rains hopefully we'll have a nice little brassicas plot here yeah and this is 
our first opportunity really to implement the killer food mm -hmm. plots into our systems. And you know, we have corn, we have soybeans, mm -hmm. we have there's plenty of major there's plenty of ag around. Ag around. So a we're good trying late to concentrate. season food source mm -hmm. right here in the core of the property right. is what we're right. trying to accomplish. Right. My name is Dave Baronio and this is Trevin Stoltzfus with Outback Outdoors and this is the Wasp Archery's Tech Talk. We get a lot of emails about broadheads and with growing popularity of people getting into more of the traditional shooting, they're asking about what broadhead would work best for them. Trevin, you shoot a traditional bow. What broadhead do you like? You know, I, I have gone through a couple different broadheads, but what I, I think you have to do is you have to say what is most important and accuracy is always going to trump everything, okay, followed by the ability to, to transfer energy effectively. I like a cut on contact. I like a heavier broadhead. I shoot the Wasp Sharpshooter Traditional. It's 150 grain. It's got a cut on contact with bleeder blades. So for me, it flies good out of my setup. And I think that's what's most important. There's a lot of good broadheads out there. As long as they're razor sharp, fly accurately out of your setup, and a cut on contact, I think you can't make a mistake. Trevin, those are great suggestions for a traditional shooter choosing a broadhead. Check out Wasp Archery. Make the switch. So we just headed to Kansas after uh, spending five days in Missouri for myself and eight days in Missouri for Trevin. Very little luck there, they weren't moving much. We've got some trail cam pictures of some pretty nice bucks here. Um, we looked at what the winds were doing. They're out of the northwest. There's a couple other stands that were questionable on whether or not the winds were right. I decided since it's our first day here, let's go with a stand that we know the wind is right. There's just not as many deer. So the deer that are coming are crossing the river usually, coming up this little hillside over from us. And uh, they should give us a pretty good shot opportunity if, they, if they're crossing the river tonight. had our first encounter with Wide Thing. He was coming down a trail and where we had crossed the trail, he stopped and turned around and went back. He winded right where we went and he, he got our scent right where we came in. He's gonna be tough to kill. He's extremely keen. I guess we'll try it again in the morning. I'm Kenton Claremont with Train to Hunt, and this is your Wilderness Athlete Minute. Starting a training program can be one of the hardest things you ever do, and then sticking with it, you need that motivation. I want to give you three tips to start and stay with a fitness program. First of all, you need to get a workout partner. People have no problem letting themselves down, but it's very seldom if you make an appointment with somebody that you're gonna call and make excuses and miss that appointment. Second, enter an event, a local event, a regional event, pay money for that event now because most people, they don't wanna be embarrassed on their performance during that event and they won't skip the event. Third is the no excuses. It's called the win the day fitness program. If you are somebody in a situation where you work all day, you just knock out 
100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups at some point during the day. If you do this enough times, you're gonna find out that you have more energy and more time on your hands than you realize, and you'll probably be on a full-on fitness program before you know it. I hope these tips help, and for a fitness program and more hints like this, visit trainthehunt.com. First morning here in Kansas. Gorgeous morning, about 30 degrees. This is gonna be the calmest day we're gonna have probably this week. We've already seen some deer uh, early, early, early. We're sitting on one side of a draw where these deer run up and down. Hopefully, hopefully we've got a trail camera in the bottom of this draw. Hopefully we see some of these bucks that we got on trail cam. And it's about a 40 yard shot. So the hard part during the rut like this is getting them to stop, you know, because usually they're right on a doe. We'll see. Nice and cool. So we're gonna get back to being quiet. Sit here and hopefully get some movement from these bucks that are cruising. that coyote came in and was milling around chasing a rabbit and I haven't shot my bow since I've been here in Kansas so that was a good opportunity we ranged him at 60 yards he had his head in the log he'd done that two or three times and I said if he does that again I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot and what that did is that reconfirmed that my bow is sighted in and uh, I should be able to make a 20 yard shot on a nice buck so if we can hit a coyote at 60 yards, we ought to be able to hit a deer at 20.
stood there just perfect. So, put the 20 yard pin on him and let it eat. I'm shaking now. <laughs> this never gets old. This has been a great hunt. Looks like we got a tag to notch. He's not a real old buck, but it was just too perfect. My legs are shaking now. <laughs> we came back to the Jenny stand that we've been sitting um, a few times this hunt. I love this stand because it's in a central part of the farm and it's kind of at a main intersection. We've got a bedding area here to the south of us and we've got a bedding area about another three eighths of a mile up to the northeast of us. And the wind is out of the south or southeast slightly so it's blowing out into a field. It's just perfect. And there's bucks that are able to come out of this bedding area cruising, checking, scent checking for does. We've had them coming up this road in between the bedding areas. And uh, we've got deer all around us. Our wind is perfect. And this is the spot that I knew would happen. I've got uh, deer coming. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm so excited. <sighs> That's right where my buck fell last year. If you have the power where you are right now to change the season back somehow to Highway 95. Kansas, we got to we got to experience a little bit of what Kansas is known for and just that crazy rut, you know. This guy came in and he was on does. He was on a doe and a fawn, yep, yeah. He talked you into shooting him, didn't he? <laughs> he did. I, it was just too too perfect. It's one of those deals where you're like, he comes in, he's he's a decent buck, he's yeah. not, not anything extraordinary by any means, but you know, a, a beautiful buck on their tail he comes in and stands 15 yards broadside and he's just standing there and I'm like it's kind of that do you bring home some meat or do you let him go for another year My cameraman Cody and I just climbed back up in the stand after shooting a, a buck earlier this morning out of the same stand. Of course, we've been in and out of here with trucks and you know loading the deer and taking pictures and hooting and hollering and doing all the good stuff. And so what we what we thought we would do is we would come back in here and see how these any deer that may be moving back through here react to all our scent on the ground. It's a good opportunity for get some to get a little bit of education on how these deer act on these fresh trails that we've been in and out on. So they'll also give us a little intel and maybe some cool B-roll of a, that big buck that Trevin's hunting. Oh, that's a good buck. You gotta be kidding me. Dude, that's wide dang. Home. Oh, 
With any luck, Trevin can get an arrow in him. Because I know he didn't get one in him tonight. <laughs> oh. It's a beautiful buck. Beautiful buck. Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.